And it's not only that people claim victimization all the time, it's like the pinnacle of our society. If you can paint yourself into a victim, that's now a positive. And I feel like the country was built by people who looked at the world the exact opposite way. I suspect you're right. You know, I, I look, it's tempting and anything that's tempting deserves a, a second look, but it's, it's, it's tempting to blame somebody else. Yeah. It's, it's tempting to talk about the injustice of it all. And that's not to suggest that there's not injustice out there. Of course there is. You know, you're not going to get your way most of the time. And things are going to conspire against you. I mean, people are going to conspire against you. All sorts of bad things are going to happen. Yeah, I get it. You know, the question is, what? so what? Just, <laughs> just, just so yeah. what? You know, I mean, yeah. I, dirty jobs in so many ways um, reconnected me to some things that I'd kind of lost sight of in my life, things I had become disconnected from, some, some, like some very literal things, like, like where my food came from and, yeah. and, and where my energy comes from, all that primal stuff. Uh, but also things like job satisfaction and the dignity of work and the fact that you know everybody's playing the cards they get as, as best they can. And the Dirty Jobbers as a group, and I, I didn't do the show as a polemic, and I, and, I, and I certainly didn't do it as some sort of social experiment, but by season three and four, you know, we had hundreds of them under our belt, and you could start to look at this group of people as a group, and you could start to ask yourself questions like, well, what do they know that I don't? And how come they're having so much fun covered in other people's crap? Yeah. And, you know, why, why is my idea of success being turned inside out the more I work on this show and the more I labor with these, with these people? Hmm. Uh, and the answer, I think, truly does have something to do with, as a group, you just didn't find a lot of self-pity these, with these people. What, what you found was an awareness, uh, kind of like, like on Band of Brothers, you know, there's this sense that we're engaged in work that is often out of sight and often out of mind and seen by many as non-glamorous mm -hmm. and, and derided in many cases by society. But rather than accept all of those stigmas and stereotypes as victims, there was more of a like, yeah, we get it. That's them but we know what happens. We sewage workers, we garbage men, mm. we welders, we steam fitters, pipe fitters. We, we know what will happen if we all call in sick for a week. And the fact that they don't is a, is a real treasure. Yeah. Um, it, there's a famous essay, I Pencil, uh, sure. which goes through. Walter. And, yeah, you're gonna test me on the name. I, I, Oh God, it's so close. It's still my time, but, but I, I know it. It's a it's a yeah, great rumination. It is, on, and yeah. it, it talks about how a pencil basically gets to you. All the things that all the miracles that have to occur. You know, sometimes I walk into these these giant stores that kind of carry a little bit of everything, with groceries and, and everything. And a lot of people walk in there and they say like, "Oh, fluorescent lights," and I look at it as a miracle. How on earth? Do we live in a place where all of these products could be available to people at low prices, anything you want? You walk into the store, almost anyone in our society can afford them. Yeah. That's never been the case anywhere in human history. I mean, this, these are miracles that we see every day. We never realize it. I know. I know. I, I feel exactly the same way. Sometimes I talk about it in terms of our infatuation with innovation mm. versus imitation. This was another big dirty jobs lesson because I met a lot of people on that show who, who were involved in the business of mass production. And so often we tend to think of that as a kind of drudgery, just to kind of making little rocks out of big rocks. Yeah. But if you look at it like, like this, right, this, th this thing is a marvel of innovation. Mm -hmm. Big brains took a long time to get the iPhone 15 to be this miracle that it is. But the real miracle is putting this thing in the hands of billions of people, right? Yeah. It just as miraculous as the tech and the innovation that allowed this thing to occur is the, the ability to duplicate it with no variance billions of times over. Yeah. That's huge. So 
I think in a lot of ways, what we do as a society is tend to, we, we put our thumb on the scale and assess a certain value to the innovative properties. Um, that's where the glamour and the sex appeal is, you know, and it comes at the expense of the brute routines required to make it something other than a prototype. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And if you... Ideas are easy, scale is hard. Always, mm -hmm. always. But to your point, it's easy to walk in Walmart and go, oh my God, what, what's ha Western civilization, is this what we've come to? Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Thank God. Pretty great. Yeah, pretty and, great. And by the way, good mm -hmm. for them for eliminating the college uh, requirement box mm -hmm. now. They've joined a couple dozen other companies who are, who are doing that, no longer requiring uh, a college degree. They got a $400,000 position right now, ru running a super center, 400 grand. No degree required. Wow. I think that's pretty great. Yeah, the credentialism has been a real problem, and it makes no sense either. None. Um